Hey again guys and welcome back. Um, sorry for the freehand video. I just want to show you what I'm up to today. So first and foremost, this power supply fan is on all the time now that it's summer. And it's quite loud. I'm going to try to put the mic up to it so you can hear it. And I'll try to put it at the same place for after this modification. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with today. I'm going to try to lower the noise on this. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be as successful as I want it to be. So there will be mitigation in the future, but I've got a live stream tonight, so I need to get this done. Another thing I want to do is these wires back here, the ones specifically that go up to the LEDs on the shelf. I want to replace them with some that I just got and put some crimp connectors. So let me just cut all this down and I will bring you to the workbench. All right, all this stuff is torn off the wall. Uh, so I'm going to start with the wiring here. So these are the wires that were going up to those LEDs. This is nice high quality silicone wire and I want to replace it with wire I got in a recent um, tool haul video which would be these guys here. Uh, I probably didn't actually edit that video yet, so sorry, spoilers. So these are 100 foot spools of red and black wire. I just need to match the length of these wires and pop them into here. And also I want to replace all the connections in here with these fork terminals. I bought these specifically for this. Um, they're pretty uh, big gauge, 16 to 14 gauge but I'm gonna to try to make them work on the smaller wires too. So, gotta to get set up for that. So when properly crimped, um, these fork terminals actually will ensure a better connection in here and to crimp them I do have a ratcheting crimper but it's too wide I think I'm going to use uh, this guy here this is supplied by another maker let's see so typically there is typically the ones with the see the spots here with the little pokey bits the pokey bits are typically for um, uh, uninsulated terminals and the insulated terminals go into these kind of flat ones here it's kind of like the oval right there so we'll see if it works um, it's not a big deal this this wire is longer than it needs to be so I'm not too concerned about um, crimping it to uh, crimping it and then ruining it and then having to crimp again so I'm actually just going to cut a little bit off of here to get more space. There we go. Yeah, I remember this stuff is full of that releasing agent for the uh, mold making process. This is a shitty uh, wire that came with my 3D printer. And I didn't Look at that. The insulation is broken. Well, that's not good. I'm going to cut a little bit higher up then. I didn't really want to use this wire for anything. I had made an extension cord out of it. But I guess this 12 volt power supply would be okay. There we go. Cut that a little bit shorter. My finger's going to be all full of this stuff now. So these guys do have a cutting blade and cut them roughly the same length more or less. And there we go and let's see if this thing strips for half a dam on these wires. Didn't work very well on the really hard PVC. Actually that works really well. That's good. A little bit softer material on this. There we go. If there's any uh, 
with that powder on it, it seems to be difficult for the jaws to grab it. Just slides. I think that's kind of the goal of the powder. Oh, that's a little short. There we go. It does grip the copper a little bit, but it's not bad. All right. So that's good. Let's get our fork terminals on them. Okay, and then I'm going to put it into the oblong hole here. Give it a squeeze. That's pretty tight. That's not coming off. That's good. So yeah, these guys are just perfect and they should fit in the hole. I should have actually checked that. Yeah, they fit perfectly in there. So that's going to be nice. really hard making sure I don't destroy the other crimp while I crimp this one. So there we go. And I think these are heat shrink. So yeah, it does say heat shrink on the packaging. So I'll be able to heat this up and make them smaller. There we go. So that's done. Now I need to do the other wires. Make sure these things don't pull out though. Yeah, seem okay. Got my pieces of wire trimmed here. They're just about the same length as these silicone wires. These are a little bit thicker. They're 14 gauge, the silicone wire is 16 gauge. So we'll see. Should be fine though. Let's see if uh, they can be stripped by the another maker tool. Oh yeah. Geez, it took, it took a lot out. Wow. I guess it broke at the wrong point. That's okay. I can always, um, I can always just trim them shorter. Let's see. Yeah, same deal on this side. Ah. Jeez. Yeah, this stuff, uh, so this is lower quality wire. That's for sure. So it's got, um, uh, fewer strands, but the strands are thicker. Gonna strip the other side too. I need uh, s uh, 10 mil length on one side. There we go. So yeah, the, this worked okay except for uh, it cuts a little long. I guess the PVC is so stiff, right? It just tears. That's okay. I'll just trim this side down. So the red wire will be slightly shorter, not a big deal. I just showered copper pieces everywhere. And these are copper. Yeah, so this was kind of, was kind of expensive because it's copper. It cost, uh, I think it was uh, 15 bucks, I think on sale for the roll, I'm not sure. Kind of expensive, but I kind of needed it. I needed a good, thick length of wire because I also need to bring a wire from this power supply here all the way around the bench and to here so I can power my new lights up on top and eventually I wanted to power all of the lights for the for the filming here I want to switch to high CRI LEDs for everything I'm doing and so eventually that power supply We'll be powering the whole show. There we go. Okay, so those two are done. Um, now I can remove these guys. And before I install them, I'm going to be making one more set of wires in order to bring the uh, 12 volts all the way across here. Cut myself um, some cable here. So this is, it's roughly 15 feet of the stuff. Uh, I don't know how much I need, so I typically go a little bit longer than I need. 
and I'll just bunch up the rest of the coil elsewhere. Um, yeah, this is supposed to carry all of the power I need at this workbench eventually. So that's why I've got it. I'm going to uh, strip the cable here. Again, it doesn't need to be super long. It's just to put the crimps on. Let's see if we can leave them this length. And the other end of the crimp. Let's see, is this long enough? Yeah, whatever. Let's try it. So the other end of the wire I'm going to leave bare because once I run it to the bench here, then I can... Uh, you know, put it in a connector or whatever I need to do. It's just that it's hard to access the power supply where it is. Probably going to mount it on the inside of that shelf too to try to reduce the noise. Yeah, we'll see. So, this goes in like so. There we go. Those are tight. So, I've got a whole bunch of crimp connectors now. So we've got uh, these two, that's our two wires for the workbench, uh, the, uh, the auxiliary bench LEDs, I should say, so that's two there. I've got these two, that's for uh, this workbench, and I've got the three on my power cable over here. So I've got all of these to heat shrink, and so I'm just going to hold them kind of in a line like this, and grab my hot air gun. And these should all sort of crimp down nicely. Uh, 200 degrees C. Seems to take a lot of heat to get these to shrink. Well, that's one trunk. I don't think I'm going to bore you with shrinking all of them. And here it is, all proper uh, shrink heat shrunk. And I was happy to see that the heat shrink inside these things have the hot glue. They're the type that actually have the hot glue. So these are now weatherproof. I mean, they're weatherproof from here back. Definitely not that way. But yeah, I like it because it actually hangs on to the wire. It gives a little bit of mechanical support at the same time as um, the uh, as the crimp. So now for the noise issue. Well, this fan is tiny, so it's probably a 60 millimeter fan or something like that. You can probably check pretty easily. Yeah, 60 millimeter. So typically, the bigger your fan, the uh, slower it has to turn to move the same volume of air. So you'll see computers usually have 120 mil fans these days because they're a lot quieter. So 120 mil is actually a little bit wider than this. So 120 is like over here. So it's a little bit wider than this power supply, but I do want to adapt a 120 millimeter fan to it eventually because I want this thing to be quiet. This thing also has a control circuit that says here, it turns on the fan by itself. But um, yeah, in my experience, uh, 20 degrees Celsius here, just powering, you know, the couple amps that it takes to power my LEDs over on the other bench um, is enough to make it turn on and not turn off. So I will probably be 3D printing a new cover or something like that um, to put a bigger fan in there. Um, but for now, I need to quiet this down. So I went on Thingiverse. And there's actually a fan silencer. So this is just a little sort of uh, unit that bolts onto where the fan bolts onto. And it's supposed to reduce the noise by making the air more laminar, I believe. So I 3D printed it out. I was sticking it on there and taking it off and put it on there and taking it off. And it was a lot quieter, but still not quiet enough. So this is okay for a temporary solution. It is not okay long term. So long term, I'll have to figure something out. 
like the, the like adapting a bigger fan but for now this will have to do for tonight now this is actually for a power supply with a different uh, bolt these bolts are too big to go through here so I'm actually just gonna I'm gonna hot glue it on and I do like hot glue as well because then I can just take it off if I need to or if I want to so this is just about centered there I'm just gonna do as if I was welding just gonna give it a little blob here and there and that will hold it down for the time being it doesn't need to be pretty just needs to hold it. It's not actually under load or anything. There we go. You can easily use something like two-sided tape. Yeah, that's for sure. But uh, that involves cutting two-sided tape to the right size and you know what? This will work just fine. So give this a few seconds to solidify and we should be good to go. Basically, I'm just going to wait till it solidifies and I'm going to mount it up with these massive zip ties provided by another maker in his last mailbag box that he sent. And then I'm going to turn it on, bring you guys back to see the noise levels. And there it is, done, reinstalled. I just need to run those uh, that bundle of wire over. It is a bit quieter, but not a lot quieter. So this is just temporary. I will put the mic now where um, the other one was approximately and we'll see if we can do back-to-back -back sound. Hopefully that worked for you, and that's the end of this video. I want to thank you all for watching.